Hi, I'm Dave. And I'm Pat, and we go missionally. So our missional community exists to serve the foster children in the surrounding community of our church. When we were challenged to think of the people group, I didn't quickly write down foster kids. I was already serving with foster kids in a minimal capacity, but I didn't quickly write it down because I wasn't sure. Yeah. It was sitting with that question for six weeks and saying, God, who is this the group? Who is this the group? We had always prayed in our retirement years that we would be able to do something together. And it's interesting because being retired, we're, we're not at the ideal age to be foster parents. So why would God open this door up for us to be able to do this? And then we had a conversation, what does that mean for us? And we both kind of came to the next step of saying, I think God's calling us to do this. Since I'm living the missional lifestyle, when I'm walking up to the building, getting ready to go in, I, I say this fleece prayer to God. And I say, God, let me take what I'm learning in here today. Sorry. Let me take what I'm learning in here today to serve the people that you place in my path tomorrow. Now I'm seeing some of the people that were out in the community trying to reach, they're coming to church. Yeah. I cannot not, <laughs> I can't, I have to do it. God's put, God's put a burning desire in my heart to be able to bring them into God's family. I just cannot imagine going back to where my life was, not having this desire and this focus on this people group that I just feel called to bring my best to make their life better. I can't imagine not doing it. I think it's gonna take everybody to get to the realization that if they have a personal relationship with Christ, they have to ask themselves, they have to go within themselves and ask themselves, okay, what is God asking me to do? I believe that God is gonna make it very clear. One of the folks in our community actually uh, sent a, a note not too long ago and said that um, she's never been a part of something where everybody is so unified on the same page of where they're trying to go and at the same time being able to use who she is in the mix of it all. So we serve the foster kids and there's somebody in our missional community that tells a story like no other. Mm -hmm. So that person is telling a story. There's somebody else who's a really warm personality greeting the foster families when they come in. That person is in that role. So we all like get to know each other, but we're all unified on the same purpose. So you're getting to know each other, placing people in their best place so that the whole picture of what we're trying to accomplish gets accomplished because you just can't do it alone. You just can't. Encouragement comes out of it. Yeah. You're alongside people that feel the same way you do. And that results in encouragement because you're sharing stories about, oh, this happened today with my conversation or that happened during this encounter. And uh, you wouldn't get that in a normal setting like a small group because now you're experiencing something together and uh, you're all passionate about it. Yeah. Going missionally has just kind of changed our life. Hey there, Mission Church, Alex Bryjack here, and we are currently in our summer Sela as we summer through the Psalms. If you're brand new with us today, we're so glad that you are tuning in, and we would love to meet you here at 82 Stratford Drive. We will be back for church on August 3rd and 4th, so be sure to come and introduce yourself and check us out then. As you can see behind me, construction is well underway, and we are so grateful to those of you who are continuing to fulfill your commitment to wait no more. If you've yet to do that, you can just head to wearemission.com slash give and you can learn all about Wait No More and what it looks like to make a commitment and to start your generosity today. We are in our series of Summer in the Psalms, so let's go check out what John has for us today. Psalm 46 verse 10, Be still and know that I am God. 
I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts, the Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress, Selah. And this is what we're looking at right now is this little Hebrew word, Selah. This rest note within the song. This, this moment where you and I choose to pause, rest, and reflect. 71 times in the book of Psalms, we see this word, Selah. And so this is what we're doing. Um, I'm right here in my little spot, my little Selah spot where we left off last. Some of you are concerned that we haven't moved for an entire week. Uh, we're, we're doing just fine. Uh, this is where we go to, uh, to Selah, uh, to, to rest, uh, to pause, and to reflect. Uh, Wayne Cordero, in his book titled Leading on Empty, such a great book, I highly recommend it. He said, our problem is not that we forget that we're Christians. He said, our problem is that we forget that we're humans. And so this is what God does. God says, all right, Selah. It's going to be easy for you to forget that you're a human being. It's going to be easy for you to start to operate as if you're a human doing. And of course, there's things for us to do. There's so many things that God has called us to, but we are human beings. And what Selah helps us do is it helps us pause. It helps us rest. It helps us reflect. Reflect that God is God. Therefore, we can be still. Selah. Selah is significant for five reasons. I shared two with you last time. And we're using Selah as an acronym. So S stands for space. That's what Selah is. It's this rest note in the midst of a song. It creates some margin. It creates some space. Uh, this is why it's significant. Selah is also significant because it gives us endurance. Uh, it's this opportunity for you and I to pause, to receive from God's Spirit and from the Word of God and the people of God what we need to keep moving forward. Selah is significant because of space. It's significant because of endurance. And what I want to move to now is the letter L. Why is Selah significant to help you and I find and follow Christ? Here's why. Selah helps us let go. In his book, Soul Keeping, one of my favorite books that I recommend to so many folks by John Ortberg. In this book, Soul Keeping, he tells of this story where there is this American on this safari and uh, this safari was being led by some local uh, Africans and they were working hard. Day one, they covered a bunch of miles. Uh, day two, they covered a bunch of miles. And, and day three, they wake up early and the American typical type A guy was like ready to you know, keep on going. Uh, yet the, the African uh, guides sat under a tree and were unwilling to move. And so, so the American was like, what the heck's going on? Like, we got to go, we got to go, we got to go. And so he was talking to the interpreter, like, tell them, like, we, we got to keep moving. And uh, so the interpreter talked to those guides and then ended up relaying onto the American. He said, the guides have said this, and you need to understand this. The guides have said, no, no, no. Today we rest. We allow our souls to catch up with our bodies. <laughs> That's what Sela is. It's a rest note. It helps you and I let go of the hurry, of the speed, of the pace. It helps you and I let go of the idol that is performance. The idol that is productivity. And here's the thing, like I, I understand this. Uh, I'm a very driven person. Uh, the guy behind the camera, Stephen, he's a very driven person. Uh, productivity, getting things done, moving things forward. Man, like, I, I, I operate this way. And yet, Tim Keller defined idolatry this way, when we turn good things into ultimate things. And so one of the reasons Selah is so hard is because it reveals the idol that is work. And what do we know about work? Well, we know that work is good, but it is not God. God created work. It's good. But how many of you that are watching this right now, if you're honest, work has become God. It's become this, this idol of efficiency and this idol of effectiveness and this idol of speed and of productivity and performance. And so what is Selah doing right now? Selah's bothering you. Selah, it, it offends you. Selah, it's like, whoa, wait a second. No, no, no. I can't pause. Well, back to that Wayne Cordero quote. Our problem isn't that we've forgotten that we're Christians. 
Our problem is that we forget oftentimes that we're humans. And so what does Selah do? Selah, it invites us into this time of strategic pause, to let go of the idol of performance and productivity for you and I to be still and know that who's God? Oh, oh, he's God. Meaning you and I are not. And that's why Selah is so significant. It is this space, it creates this rest note. What does Selah do? It helps us with endurance and Selah helps us let go forth. What does Selah do? Selah helps us appreciate. It helps us appreciate. Appreciation of what? Well, so many things. Uh, right now, just sitting there, I mean, it I helps me appreciate God's creation. It leads me to a place of awe and wonder. What else does Selah help me appreciate? Man, it helps me appreciate all the good things and God things happening in my life. But specifically and contextually, when it comes to Psalm 46, that word Selah is in there to help us appreciate what we just read. It's really important. In essence, if I were to put a different word in there instead of Selah to, to accomplish the same thing, it would be, hey, go back and appreciate what you just read. That's really what Selah means. In fact, the, the literal translation of the Hebrew word Selah is to hang. It's to hang. And the reason it's that literal translation is because back in the ancient days, they would discern something's worth and value based on how much it weighed. They would hang it on a scale and the weight of it would reveal its worth. And this is what Selah is. It's a chance for you and I to pause and to hang, to discern, to evaluate, to weigh the weightiness of the word of God that we just read. That's what Selah literally means. And how weighty are these words? To be still and to know that who's God? That he is God. These words are so weighty. And then it goes on to say, for the Lord, capital L, O R D, Yahweh Almighty, the Lord Almighty is with us. One of the reasons you and I fail to pause. One of the reasons you and I choose to not stop, to not rest, is because we think that we're God or we think that all of a sudden it's up to us. That it's up to us, that we're the ones that are gonna make it happen and yet, what does Psalm 46 remind us of? Psalm 46 reminds us that God is with us. One of the greatest truths uh, that we can ever come across is that he is Emmanuel, God with us us. The Lord Almighty is with us. And what does Selah do? Selah helps us weigh that. Selah helps us pause. Selah, Selah helps us reflect on that truth. What if you were to stop, pause, rest, and reflect on the truth that God is with you right now? I don't know what you're going through this summer. For some of you, this summer break, it has not felt like a summer break at all. Uh, things are actually harder in the summer for you, busier in the summer for you. Things with your family have become more difficult. Things in your relational world have become more trying. And so what do you need to do? You need to Selah. You need to uh, take time to pause and to remember that God is with you. To truly appreciate this truth that He is the one that is for us and He is the one that is with us. Why is Selah significant? Well, five reasons. It helps us with space. It gives us some space. This is my Selah spot. This is where I'm experiencing some space, me and Jack. It helps us endure. What else? It helps us let go. It helps us know that, that we are not God and I need that reminder. We don't forget that we're Christians. No, we forget that we're human. Well, what else? Well, Selah helps us appreciate. It helps us live lives of gratitude. It helps us appreciate truth. Like to, to truly sit in and marvel at the truth of God's word that he, Lord Almighty, is with us. What else? Fifth and finally, Selah is significant because it helps us hear God. If you were to ask me, Pastor, what is like maybe the most important thing I can develop as a follower of Jesus. I think I would say learning to hear the voice of God. Hearing the voice of God. 
Now, some friends of mine uh, were going through a devotional this summer called Experiencing God, and that's what it's all about. It's, it's helping you hear and discern the voice of God. Selah, it is in Psalm 46, right after we read that passage. Why? So that you would not just keep on moving with your life. It slows us down enough to consider. It slows us down enough to ponder. It slows us down enough to truly hear what God just said. How often you and I, when we read the Word of God, we just try to get through it. And yet, Selah, it becomes these speed bumps for us. You and I know what speed bumps are. You know when you enter a, a neighborhood with speed bumps, you just all of a sudden start going a little bit slower. You start to notice. You start to look around and, and make sure that you know, there's no kids or there's no anything that, that might get in the way of your vehicle. Well, the same is true with Selah. It helps us hear what God just said. You and I, we need to become not just a people of the eyes, but a people of the ears. That you and I would develop this ability to hear the voice of God and then do what God says. This is why Selah is so significant. Selah helps us hear God. What if you were to take a pause? What if you were to take a time of rest and reflection to truly hear God? What do your Selah moments need to look like? Well, I don't know. They can look like a lot of different things. Uh, early in the morning, I start my day in my chair. Uh, we call it chair time. Uh, the dads that have been to Camp Paradise, so many dads at Mission go uh, and, and, and experience Camp Paradise. Chair time when you sit in that Adirondack. Well, you can do that back here in your normal everyday life. I do it every morning. Uh, you can actually get a little bit uh, more creative with it, like I am doing right now. There can be a Selah spot that you go to and you're alone with, with God where you can truly say, God, I'm here to, to hear from you. You can take time to reflect on what you've already read to say, God, I want to hear your voice. What does your Selah need to look like? What does it need to look like for you and I to practice Selah so that you and I can experience space, so that you and I can endure, so that you and I can let go because work is good, but it's not God, so that you and I can appreciate the weightiness of the Word of God so that we can hear God. And it changes everything when we are his sheep who hear his voice. When we become a people of the ears and not just the eyes, where our ears are tuned to his voice. And that kind of practice happens in Selah. And so right now, would you get some more practice? Would you get some more practice, church? And before we hit the gas pedal and kick off another ministry season here quickly in the month of August, we're practicing this strategic pause so that you and I could be the people of God for such a time as this, that we would lead and live from a full place, that we would lead and live knowing that truly we have met with the living God who has helping us and continues to help us be still and know that He is God, that the Lord Almighty is surely with us. Selah. Let's continue to practice some Selah. I'm going to continue to practice some Selah right now. And we will see you guys soon. Selah. Thanks so much for tuning in today. We would love to see you right here at 82 Stratford Drive for our normal service times on Saturday and Sunday, starting back up on August 3rd and 4th. We love you guys. We'll see you then.